So, after all the events, and he celebrates with the party one last time, and gets a drink and a single order of noodles, and would have been the first to leave, telling everyone he would wants nothing more than to see his children again. Oh, golly. <laughs> he walks back, thinking on all the events, all the way back to Elevation Pit. And he spends some time there. He was ready to see things change and people he knew who was about the same age leave before him. He was ready to hold the hand of his wife as she passed on. And while in Elevation Pit, he established an order to keep the law, to keep magic in check, to keep an eye on those who would abuse it. An order of paladins, of warriors, of those who wish to do good. Above it would hold a crest, each representing something that he has learnt. Something that means something to him. A single dagger in a shape of a obsidian glass takes the centre as it stands behind the rest of the emblem in the shadows. Next to it is surrounded by a circle of water, shining with parts of silver. A violin takes the centre stage behind, in front of the dagger, ringing out a note. Two pairs of draconic wings stand, and all being held by this beautiful glitter that shines when the light hits it just right. And a single gauntlet has it all in the palm of its hand, as if written. And under it states the three tenets of the order to always uphold justice, to always respect others, even when you disagree with them. And to always give people a second chance. The order comes into fruition and soon his son takes his place. As Luck has realized something he was not prepared for. He would outgrow and outlive his children. And on that realization, he found he could not stay in Elevation Pit any longer. He hands his pickaxe to his son and the gauntlet off to uphold the things that were established. And he walks off. He would come to help the party whenever they would need it. But eventually, even they would struggle to find him as he headed over to the drow. As there was a job that needed to be done. And from then on, he would dedicate the rest of his life that he did not want or deserve to freeing the, those people as best as he could. And he would head all the way to the city of the Drell, Thon Sandral. And that is where most people last heard he was heading. You are approached at one day at Lunaria by an envoy of a familiar name, Madame of Drinois. The Thorn Weaver cleric, the Thorn Weaver Druid, a drow with dark skin and white thorns scarified into their skin, 
flanked by two of the blood cloaks of the drow escort you from Lunaria in a direction you had not ventured before, not east or west down the Viceroy's Highway, but due south into the Midnight Weald, place where very few venture and none return. The forest grows deeper and deeper as you head south until the Midnight Wheels moniker becomes hard to ignore, that even in the middle of the day, there are places that are so, the forest is so thick, it is like midnight beneath its boughs, beneath its boughs. And that's when you come upon it. One of the greatest secrets of this world. Von Sangrial, the city of blood and thorn, the true capital of the drow, bonded since the beginning of this world to the humans who saved them from the Shadowfell. When the first Drenois led her people here, and you are escorted, one of the first humans in generations, to Thon Sangrial to answer their call, to once again be freed by a human as Loth has found them once again and is trying to retake them. <laughs>